Hey there, so today we have another review and this is a beer from Dogfish Head. So this is 60 Minute, one of the classics. It's been quite a while since I reviewed, uh, had this beer even, but I reviewed it last time, had to be in that blind taste test that I did with a bunch of IPAs. This one didn't clock in super well. But anyway, the reason why I'm having this is that uh, this is one of the fun nuances of living in Florida. We have a place called Publix. It's a uh, uh, really cool, great kind of supermarket chain. Uh, definitely more expensive than your Walmart, but it's definitely got a great deli counter. And I think like for some people, like Wegmans might be a good comparison. I'm not quite sure, but it's it's like, it's a, it's upscale Kroger as Katie says. It's not as nice as Whole Foods and expensive as Whole Foods, but it's like somewhere in the mid and high tier supermarket, who knows, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, the thing they do every week is that they put a bunch of their products as BOGO, buy one, get one, which is pretty awesome. Like, you know, you can buy your mayo, your crackers that week for half the price basically. The big one is when they do beer. Uh, beer at Pogo is a very good discount. And actually, I uh, went to a couple stores and had a had hard time finding some Dogfish Head because they were doing all six packs of Dogfish Head at Bogo, which is half price, which is having worked in beer retail, you don't get half, you know, even working there, you don't get a half price. So uh, but being able to buy two, uh, like example here, six packs for instead of 11.50 for like, you know, five something is a very good price. And why not revisit this beer? So. That's a lot of talking. This beer is 6%, 60 minutes, this is classic. And this is quite fresh. Best Buy December. And they're pretty much doing a Best Buy, I wanna say, because, or I'm quite sure they're doing a Best Buy. Because it has a D, which I don't know what that means, uh, 1661. So 166 Julian, you guys look it up. That's somewhere in June and we're, we're in July. So this should be pretty fresh. Uh, this is a, so not a very dark IPA, but it's got a kind of medium gold color. Uh, nice clarity on that, fluffy white head. Smells pretty nice, nothing crazy. I smell some sweet malts in there. I mean like grainy sweet malts, not like, you know, oxidized sweet or uh, stickly sweet. And then there's this nice kind of like pretty floral element to it. It's got a little bit of grapefruit rind, some of that kind of just general citrusiness. It's got also this sprinkling of just forest and green pine. Very familiar nose, but honestly, just not very punchy. It smells just like light hoppy ale, like just um, not extremely descript or um, um, evocative of anything specific, but also pretty classic. Like it doesn't smell like it's been in like New England or generated um, extreme, extremely new. This is like a Neoclassic, <laughs> if you want to say neoclassic, uh, aromatic nose. Oh, so the first thing noticeable about this beer, this beer is very light for an IPA. Wow. Wow. That's what beer used to taste like, huh? So I always thought this beer, maybe they changed the recipe, maybe they didn't, and just revisiting this beer. Um, it's very light on the malt. That's one thing noticeable. It is very restrained on bitterness as well. And it honestly drinks a little bit like a, I mean, I guess the closest beer I can like immediately think of is like something like Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And even that beer has more evocative hop character and malt. No, it's right there. It's around there. Uh, that beer might uh, sing with a little bit more malt, but then again, Sierra Nevada Pale, Pale Ale is like, you know, pretty big for a Pale Ale and almost leans towards IPA. This is a very, a smaller IPA, so means maybe towards pale ale. So that's where you get the blurring of, you know, pale ale IPA. Up front, um, I get a nice kind of just uh, plain pine bitterness. It's got a little bit of uh, floral element to it. Uh, there's an earthy element that reminds me of some of the West Coast beers. Um, the malt is pretty tame. There's a little bit of honey biscuit in there, um, but not overly sweet, not overly cloying, just a little bit of graininess on this guy. Um, like just slight toasted bread, honey biscuit. Bitterness is very moderate on this guy. This is like medium to medium minus bitterness. It's, it's not really that bitter at all. It lingers a little bit too. And then generally the mouthfeel is medium to medium, to medium minus. It, um, uh, yeah, it's solid medium. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's yeah me minus it's got a little bit of the zippy kind of um uh grapefruit zest uh playing there as well but 
honestly, yeah, it, it's surprising. I didn't know what to expect coming to this guy. It's sort of like a little bit of a different spin on Sierra Nevada Pale. If you like that beer, you're going to like this one. It just tastes classic to me. Uh, the malts are definitely pulled back compared to Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Uh, hops are definitely not as punchy. Um, comes off with maybe a little bit more bitterness in that beer, but that's about it. It just is a classic-ish kind of recipe. Ah, good stuff. Um, Tasty. This is sort of your barbecue beer. This is something probably good for pairing too, because it's not um, overly impactful. A lot of IPAs are way too bitter, way too malty, way too hoppy to sort of uh, take over dishes. So this probably sits at a really nice kind of moderate place. Um, it's good. I think there's a, quite a, a few IPAs on the market that I prefer, uh, especially if I'm drinking, if I'm drinking IPA. You know, uh, if I'm drinking pale ale, then. You know, that's what you're at. Maybe if you drink pale ale. If you're a pale ale drinker, you're going to love this. IPA drinker, not so much. Let's go with the solid 90 on this guy. 90. 60 minute. It's good. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Later.